there a second? Any discussion on the agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. We'll move on to public comment. Do we have any public comment tonight? Yes. Yeah, the board is going to go into closed session to evaluate the specific Expenditures of tax money. This is from written, written out right now, or of course, it's here for the School of, Ed Board of Education from a uh, court opinion in 1981. So I ask that if, uh, if you're still using privacy as a reason for not allowing the public uh, to have input, that you uh, table the evaluation tonight and get legal opinion to find out if you have to allow public. My good thing for November is I'm testing for some of my report cards which are coming up the week after Thanksgiving. And I have a visual for you. Testing letters and sounds in kindergarten is a major part of our curriculum. So at the beginning of the year, I tested uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and letter sounds. I told one student today that I pulled his file at the beginning of the school year, exactly two months apart. At first, he knew 14 uppercase letters. Now he knows them all. And he was so excited when he oh. sent it to me. He's like, I know them all. <laughs> and then for lowercase, he knew six. He now knows 18. And for sound, he knew 11. And now knows 24. Oh, so it's great. a huge celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm here on behalf of the support staff 
I'd like to convey to the board the support staff's appreciation for going through the arduous process of coming to an agreement on a brand new contract. Not only did we have an entirely new contract to create, we also had the task of trying to do it while in quarantine, as we started this pre-March 2020, with new social distancing requirements, illnesses, and sadly a loss of, of a loved one. Thank you for your time, your flexibility, your commitment, and your understanding during this process. Additionally, late Friday evening, we received an email of what was submitted to and approved by your legal counsel. We look forward to the support staff having an opportunity to meet and to ratify the agreement. Thank you again for your time and your professionalism. Thank you. remains strong, which is a great thing to be able to say. We are on track to have a strong fund balance for the next fiscal year, and this would allow us to not borrow with the annual state aid note. Does anybody believe that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the first time that I can remember. Yeah. We've been aiming and hoping for this for many years, so we hope that uh, the trajectory will continue in that direction and that will, in fact, come true. Um, there are a couple of different kinds of funds that we're able to spend through um, COVID supports, ESSER 3 and ESSER 2. Um, 3, uh, Tyler and I have been working on, on these funds and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about a suggestion uh, in, a, in a little bit because uh, it's about $200,000 and 20% of that money needs to be spent by districts to remediate learning loss that happened as a result of the pandemic. Um, I think for a lot of schools, this is a uh, no-brainer. It's quite easy to do, and that's pretty much what they're all about. But we actually had very low learning loss as a result of the pandemic because our uh, teachers did such a phenomenal job just keeping on teaching, and uh, we were able to stay in session almost the whole year as opposed to some of the schools downstate who were you know, out for actually almost the entire school year. So we feel really good about where we are, and yet it's our job to spend about 40000 of that money to uh, bring our kids a little bit higher in their proficiency. So um, we are going to be attacking math in that way specifically, and so we'll talk about that in a bit. ESSER 2 funds are more flexible, and um, we do plan to use ESSER 2 funds to, to cover teacher salaries and benefits, and then that will free up additional general fund money that we can use in any way that we would like to. And that's um, a way that a lot of local districts are doing that. Um, we have just about 40000 left in our bond project fund, and we um, will just be discussing the use of the remaining funds. There's just a few little odds and ends that remain, and uh, 40000 actually isn't a whole lot anymore. So we're really pleased that we're at this point in our project, and we've heard nothing but positive feedback. I can't remember if I mentioned at the last meeting um, a, a fantastically fun moment for me when I was standing in the lobby and a visiting basketball team came in, and one of the kids stopped and looked around and went, whoa, this is a nice school. <laughs> I was so excited to hear that from somebody else. And they came from a really nice school too. So we're like, oh, it works. Everybody comes in and can really appreciate what we've got here. Um, so the audit is still underway. Um, our core business manager, Tyler, has been here many, many very late nights, like midnight and past sometimes. Uh, my kid ran into him here in the middle of a Saturday one day. He has put in so many hours. This uh, new company doing our audit has really been keeping mm -hmm. his and the other business managers' noses to the grindstone, um, but that process, process is nearly done. We do not yet know if they are going to give us a presentation like uh, a webinar or just a packet for the next board meeting or if someone is going to live on the screen with us. At that point, we're not really sure, but the audit is nearly finished and 
you're looking pretty good. And I think that's it from Tyler. Uh, I'll start my part of the update um, on the topic of COVID. Uh, COVID is real and uh, it is in our community and we uh, have seen more cases here in our school and kids therefore have had to quarantine. Um, I still would like to say how proud I am of the system that we have here at our school because those kids who are not sick in bed and are just home quarantining due to us following the health department's guidelines do not have to fall behind at all. We need to flip everybody with a Chromebook at the 6th to 12th level. Every teacher is ready to go when the Google meets so they don't even have to miss a single class and we can even count them in attendance if they show up there on the screen. So we're really pleased with that. And at the elementary level, we've had actually very few, not done with, um, kids uh, with COVID at that level, but the teachers are ready to go with the materials that, that we keep them home, including a special ed teacher and whatever is needed, they, they scramble to do that. Danielle and Rachel, the other administrative assistant, make those things happen very quickly. So we've had positive feedback. Thank you so much about those kids. Um, we are continuing to follow the health department's guidelines on timelines and uh, when people have to mask and when they have to antigen test and everybody's been extremely cooperative and supportive of that so we appreciate that too. Uh, Jesse and I were just saying recently how awesome our parents are and they, they just want what's best and they, they work together with us and um, not all of our school administrators can, can say that it's been such a picnic so we're really grateful. And the same says, uh, same goes for the staff and the teachers. Uh, okay, I think I started uh, talking about ESSER 3 and then that 20% of those funds that we need to use to remediate the learning loss and we want to focus on that. Um, a little bit later in the agenda, I would like us to discuss adding a new paraprofessional in conversation with elementary teachers. This is um, something that has come up many times over the past years and especially this year when we're looking at math and um, our scores for these math skills are not where we would like them to be and basically how can we get there where we want to be if we don't devote more time and resources to that. There are these extra funds available right now so we are suggesting using those in that way. Um, so let's see, kitchen crew compliments. Um, we've been a month to now, uh, as of today, uh, was October 15th was Miss Judy's last day and so we've been a month without a food service director and I cannot say enough to praise our kitchen crew and everybody in school is nodding their head and will say the same. It's, it's been phenomenal. They, they didn't know how to do the job and everybody pitched in, Glenn, Sheila, Lucretia and Donna to just continue to serve really good food to our kids and our staff. They didn't miss a beat. Um, attitudes have been phenomenal. They just doubled and tripled their work hours just ready to help the school in any way that they could. So I just cannot thank them enough. Um, good news on that front is just today, uh, I had a, a, a follow-up discussion with a phenomenal candidate and she agreed, and the board approved her to be our food service director. And we'll talk a little bit more about her when we get to that point in the agenda. Um, we have a long-term sub for our music and band teacher, Alina Komichina. She's from Russia. And she's also been doing a really nice job. Kind of quiet, soft-spoken. Does speak English. It's not her first language, and that's apparent. The kids have been really wonderful with her, though. And um, she's a musician. She graduated from a um, university with a bachelor's and I think a master's in music, and also a master's in law in Russia. And here she is um, in our area for five years and trying something very new. Awesome. And on the topic of substitute teachers, we are in the middle of a sub shortage, so I want to give a shout out to all the teachers who've been stepping up and subbing for each other when we have not had a person from the outside able to cover those classes. So that's been happening all over the school. It's not unnoticed, it's very much appreciated. We know that it's a burden and it, um, it's exhausting, but everybody has continued to do that and we thank you for that. Uh, support staff negotiations, as Mrs. Strand mentioned, were completed um, a couple weeks ago, and we're really thrilled about that. And we're newly landed. We um, have some, you know, a, a, a contract to approve. We hope that will happen in a little bit. But there are some significant raises in place for support staff, and we're able to offer everybody who is a considered a full-time employee that seven or more hours a day. Uh, single subscriber health insurance. So we're moving in that direction now officially that we've wanted to go in for a very long time excited about that too. Um, we have a support staff appreciation week 
two weeks ago, and that was the brainchild of the high school leadership team, and they brought it back to everybody else, and everyone was excited about the chance to say thank you, and we appreciate you to our support staff, so that was really fun, and some moms came in to a coffee bar for them, our cultural studies class baked goodies for them, and it was, it was just really neat, a lot of uh, kids work together to make these um, appreciation boards with the, everybody's picture and some happy notes, so that was a fun time. Uh, we could not do school without support staff. It's extremely, extremely important to what we do here. And I also want to give kudos to our athletic director, Sarah Moylanen. She, um, <laughs> she wasn't able to sub for other teachers during uh, the sub crisis that I just mentioned because she's already teaching a full schedule. She does not have a prep period. She's teaching five a day. On top of it, she's doing athletic director duties uh, before and after school. She's bringing the salmon in the classroom, saying to the school here in the lobby, <laughs> when I've seen that tank and wondered about it. She, um, she doesn't stop, and um, our athletic program has never been so solid as it is right now. So we thank Sarah. It is truly amazing. She's a hero. And uh, thank you to Mr. Cantula, Mr. Pions, Mr. Colick, um, Brian for all the setup, all of the people who participated in the Veterans Day program, which was really, really nicely done. We have it just here in the gym so everybody could spread out. Um, there was a variety of speeches, performances, uh, poems, all kinds of things, and it was just really well done and very much appreciated. And uh, this Saturday in the gym again, we will have a craft fair sponsored by our travel club, and they're trying to earn money to go to Europe next summer, and we have a pancake breakfast that our PTO is putting on downstairs in the cafeteria in the morning as well. So everybody's invited to come out for those things. Finally, I'm sure Mr. Kay will talk a lot more about this kind of thing, but we are just but at the end of trimester one. Uh, trimester two begins the day following Thanksgiving break. Exams are next week for those students who are taking them, and things just keep on moving right along. Okay, thank you, Madison. Okay, yeah. Shut the Could you shut the door for me? All right, so yeah, uh, from the principal's report, um, just I'll kind of touch on a, a few things that. Um, Christina already has um, and, a, and a few new things, but um, but yeah, things are moving along quickly. These are just some highlights. <laughs> a lot more things happening behind the scenes for sure. Um, but uh, one was that the Veterans Day uh, program that Ms. Nolan already kind of uh, talked about. And it was just I thought it was a fantastic way to honor our veterans, and it's a, a really a great project because it's it's just such a real live education for our students uh, who are involved, right? And they, Essentially, this was student-driven. Um, Alex Pinock, he's our, our new social studies teacher, and he dove right in. This is his first year doing it. He, he, uh, he did a great job. He, he was, was collaborating with, with all, everybody in the school. Um, third grade, my wife created artwork. Jade um, was, was doing the same in her art classes. Um, the, I thought the, the moment, the most powerful moment, was we had a young man, a fourth grader, and he wrote this fantastic poem. And uh, we were having elementary kids go up on the, on the stage and, and, and read the poem to the group. And, and he just couldn't do it. He was breaking down. He didn't, he didn't want, you know, he was uh, nervous, right? Stage fright. And his dad, who was a disabled veteran, I had a Dollar Bay grad, kind of grabbed him and said, hey, let's go, buddy. And, they, and he read his poem, you know, with him. Oh. And, you know, they're like, it was hard not to tear up about oh, that one. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, but just, you know, like I, we talk about like window to community events, right? And this was one of them. And I thought our students just were phenomenal. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Glad that happened. Uh, talking a little bit about Support Staff Appreciation Week, it's true. We this this place, I, I've earned or I've developed such a, a respect for what our support staff does day in and day out for our students, um, and just recognizing the important things that they do. Um, I thought we had a lot of fun celebrating uh, the support staff. So thank you all um, for uh, for being you. So, um, Christine, I talked a little bit about this one, um, the the exams come, which are coming up. Um, in the, the handbook right now, it currently talks about how all um, teachers essentially are um, give exams. Um, the high school, middle school, high school uh, team thought, you know, if we can make a, a small switch to that. Um, we felt sixth graders at this point just maybe aren't ready for, a, for an examination at the end of the trimester. You know, they're going to continue to learn and develop within the classroom. You know, we're not sure a, a final assessment, um, you know, worth 20% is, is really the best for, for a sixth grade group. And the seventh grade group, we would like them to have a final assessment. But we're, we don't think they're capable of really understanding the impact that 20% has on their grade. 
Um, so we'd like to make an adjustment that say, yes, seventh graders, you're going to have an assessment, but it's not going to be the 20%, right? And the teacher can determine what, what that percentage is at that point. So um, that's a change we're, we're looking to make. Um, you know, I just wanted to kind of air that and talk about that here. Um, Renaissance testing is uh, a new new form of testing we're doing. This is uh, state mandated, um, and uh, last year we did what's called the Smarter Balance Interim Assessment, right? Okay, and we didn't really like it. Um, we just felt felt the, the the data we got wasn't wasn't good. We had a hard time accessing the data. Our students really kind of didn't take to the test. So we talked um, this Renaissance test seemed to be a better. Um, better assessment for our students grades three through eight. Um, and, uh, and we got it done, um, and it's great. So our students uh, did a great job. I know Kim and I are working together for some of that, that reporting. So we're hopefully gonna use this assessment data um, in, in a way that's impactful. Um, we're also gonna test again in the spring. Um, so we've got some baseline data and we can show growth uh, as well. So, um, so I think that went much better than it did last year, which I was happy about. And it was easier to administer. <laughs> okay. Um, Halloween concert uh, was awesome. The middle school and high schoolers did a great job. Uh, Amy the avocado, right? Was, uh, they had a, they had a comp costume competition dress up and uh, the students did, did well. It was uh, Miss Johnson, Miss Johnson's last um, concert or essentially last day uh, before she went on maternity leave. So, um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, we had a, a pretty cool um, staff training um, where uh, representatives from Michigan Tech's Center for Pre-College Outreach came in and they did a, what's called an unboxed event. And what it is, is it's a STEM-based um, science, technology, engineering, math, uh, engineering and math. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an escape room where you use math clues and science clues to essentially solve a puzzle um, or solve a mystery. Um, and uh, it, it's just this really neat way to bring in STEM concepts to our students. Uh, the reason we did it with the, the staff first is the staff is now trained. Um, so when we, we bring this event to our students um, in the winter, you know, the staff can help um, you know, with the event. So uh, I just, I thought it was a really cool way to spend an afternoon with the staff having fun and learning about STEM. And uh, finally, um, fall to winter sports transition. So I don't know if you all have heard, but the girls were runners up in the Upper Peninsula and the boys were UP state champions. So cross country, big time. That's, that's a lot of fun. Um, so pretty proud of them. We had a lot of um, you know, welcome back parades and uh, we had a, this really neat assembly in the gym that just I, I thought couldn't have any better for, for them. So congratulations. Uh, volleyball, hey, they, they ended tough. Kendrick Kangas was elite team and first team. We're not sure if we ever had an elite volleyball player here, so that might be a first. We, we don't know for sure, so that's cool. And Maggie Gaunt was second team all conference. Um, our junior high boys season is currently underway and they're undefeated and, and really doing a good job dominating competition. And uh, boys and girls varsity teams have begun practicing. So um, as Ms. Norman said, lots happening, but lots to be thankful for. Anybody else got yeah. any great reports? Well, great, so we will move on then. Do we have a motion to approve the hire of Jen Shalo as the school director? So, um, sh shortly after um, Judy officially let us know that it, um, she was definitely going to be leaving us, we posted for the position and right off the bat had um, a really excellent um, candidate apply and uh, that fell through for, um, for some personal reasons. Same thing happened again a few days later, same thing happened the next week. It was really interesting just a few really phenomenal candidates right at the beginning and then just various things caused it to not not work out. Um, I was getting pretty worried at that point and um, was just kind of asking everybody and their brother and everybody I, everybody in here was reaching out to everybody and their brother who might possibly be able to uh, qualify as a food service director. And so um, a couple of people applied meanwhile and, um, and that was good. Um, meanwhile, I had been told by a couple people about this person named Jennifer Spalo. She has uh, been the food director and uh, provided food for the campers at Kitchigumi for the past 10 years. Um, was a school teacher previously as well. And um, I just heard that if we could get her, that would be phenomenal. She, uh, she wasn't knocking on our door, but I went knocking on her door. And, um, and just through, a, I guess, an interesting series of events, it, it turned out that um, 
it was actually a really good time in her life to consider a job during the school year. Of course, the Kigumi was mostly operating in the summer and just, um, just kind of was really hopeful. We had some really good conversations. I thought right off the bat that she'd be perfect. There's a lot of paperwork and a lot of compliance stuff with reporting, ordering, record keeping, that type of thing. And it was clear that she was um, going to be a natural at that part, as well as having a ton of experience in the kitchen and um, not just heating food up, but making food from scratch and um, with, with a lot of vision for a program like ours as well. So again, she wasn't quite sure at first, but then I followed up with her a few days ago. She said, yeah, I actually was thinking I'd like to come here and have another conversation and actually was thinking a lot more effectively in this. And so she came in this morning and we had a great conversation and it ended with uh, me saying, I, I really want you to do this. <laughs> and she's saying, yeah, I think it's the right thing. So. Uh, we bring her before you, Jennifer Salo from Gitchagumi, and I think it's going to be a really good fit to our program. Cool. So we have our motion and we have a second. So I will just discuss it. Any other discussion? I'm seeing your hands. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. So moving on. Do we have a motion to approve the hire of Ann Grimm as high school cheer coach? I'll make the motion. Do we have a support? All right. Do we have any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. I should have said something, Dr. Sure. Thanks for a minute. That's okay. Sarah has shared um, just a little word on both of the uh, cheer coach candidates. She said that she recommends the hire of April Stevens for a junior high cheer program. She's super organized, has the heart of a blue bolt. And we really appreciate her stepping up to fill this role this year. And for the JV Varsity, she says that she recommends the hire of Annie Greb to lead our JV and Varsity cheer team. Uh, she's currently on an EU cheer squad. And Sarah will be co-coaching with Annie to support the team on the occasions when Annie is busy at a game <laughs> or, um, or wherever she is in the evening that she can't attend one of our games. So it's going to be a kind of a, a group effort there. Great. Thank you for that. I think we're done with that one. Now. I think we need to do April. I know, yeah. So do we have a recommendation to approve the hire of April Stevens as junior high cheer coach? I'll make that motion. Any support? Any support. support. Steve. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All abstaining, sir. Do I abstain? Because you can be later to April Stevens. Yes. Do we have a motion to discuss the hire of an additional paraprofessional? I'll make that motion. Do we have support? Have support. Okay. Do we have discussion? So this is what I was referring to earlier with our SF3 funds, and we've got $40,000 that we would like to spend. Um, wouldn't cost that much to hire another paraprofessional, but um, we would be looking for somebody who, actually, I'm not even sure if we would hire a paraprofessional if, if the board were to um, be in favor of that to step in as a math person or if one of our current paraprofessionals would step over to more of a math role. Um, but point is, we need somebody who can offer some one-on-one -on -one support to students. We need um, math intervention, some small group support like we do for reading. Um, as you know, the last few years we focused a lot on reading and our scores have improved immensely. We're really happy about that. Kids, um, the, the three paraprofessionals we have are awesome, and they've been trained in various reading interventions, and basically their entire day is scheduled work, working with small groups and one-on-one -on -one and testing students in the ELA. And so we want to at least start moving in the direction of offering that same kind of support for math in hopes of seeing those scores improve the way that the reading scores have. So um, years back, Ray Lominen, one of our three parapros, spent a lot of time in the math classroom. So you know, that would be one, one thing we would discuss is whether we would just ask Ray to step back into that math role and then hire another pair pro who could then step in again as ELA. And, um, or, you know, maybe we find a candidate who said, I'm all about math, and, and that was the perfect fit for them. We would really be obviously in discussion with teachers and the current staff to figure out what was the best way to go. Um, point is, there's plenty of money there within the 40000 and we're still going to be needing to find other ways to spend that down. 
Um, and this would help us and get us that care professional that we've been looking for for years now anyway. Um, you probably are also wondering, well, what are you doing when you know that S3 money is gone? It's not going to be a perpetual source. Um, Tyler and I in our discussion thought that at-risk funds would be perfect for that, and actually we have a surplus right now of at-risk funding, and um, those monies can be used pretty flexibly, but they, they basically obviously are, um, are pointing at students who are at risk of not meeting benchmark. Well, that's exactly what we're about here. So uh, we feel that we could use that money this year and even part of next year from the S3 pot to support this new math curve And then after that, we would just continue with them on with at-risk funds. So that's what I'm suggesting following up on a conversation with the elementary staff at a meeting and um, Tyler thought that was a great idea to send it down to because <laughs> um, we, we got to do it. Any further discussion? I'd make the motion that we authorize the posting of an additional paraprofessional uh, based on the funding availability that was just discussed. I'll support that. Explain this one too. <laughs> yeah, this is a really cool one. Um, anybody who has been involved in contract negotiations recalls that when we get to the Schedule B part, it, it can get messy and frustrating because what we've had is a Schedule B that is completely separate from the Schedule A, the main salary schedule. And um, we had a seven step system that had just a range of dollar amounts without really a whole lot of rhyme or reason. And so whenever we would get through the grueling task of mm -hmm. <laughs> negotiating the regular salary schedule, we then had to embark upon this task of doing the same with something that really had very little rhyme or reason to it. Um, if anybody doesn't know, Schedule B is um, this, the salary schedule for um, extracurricular, coaching roles, um, special, support roles and different things that teachers do um, in addition to their regular teaching duties. So it was definitely time for a revamping. It's been time for a long time. Most schools use a percentage of the BA base system for their Schedule B, so we were interested in considering that this year. And what that means is you take whatever the BA base is, and currently in our school is 36,000, and then um, depending on what group you're in, and obviously the level of responsibility and the time commitment, you would have a higher and higher percentage of that base that you get paid. Um, so we had some actually really great discussions. It was just we had decided that um, negotiations this summer we were going to just keep that part simple. It was just me and Sarah Moynihan and Mary Radio um, just sitting down together saying, hey, what makes sense? We, uh, Sarah had done a lot of homework of gathering all the different Schedule Bs of all the other comprehensive ISD schools and seeing where, where their percentages were and we just did a lot of compare and contrast and obviously wanted dollar base to fall somewhere between the middle <laughs> and the high end there because as we know it's harder and harder to entice people to positions, especially coaching positions and we wanted to be able to be competitive and also be responsible. So I think those conversations went really well uh, went really smoothly actually, just kind of once we got in the groove of, of discussing and figuring out a pattern, um, it just was pretty easy to compare with other schools, land on a figure that made sense based on our base rate, and that's what we have before you right now. Now, after Sarah and Mary brought um, the proposed thing that we came up with to their union, there were some questions about, oh wait, didn't we talk about the Schedule B position possibly being added or switching this and that one around? That all is in the ABC range. So what we thought is maybe tonight the board would be willing to approve the D through the J, which includes all of our coaches. That way we can get our fall coaches paid <laughs> at the new rates. And um, we all are you know, in the same spirit of understanding that this is a schedule that makes sense. We want to go in this direction. It's much simpler. There are no steps. 
which people involved thought just made sense because the three year basic course is going to be going up and up and up, so we don't need that anymore. Um, but if we can just approve the BBJ, deal with ABC next time, then I think everybody would be happy. I recommend it. Um, any questions? <coughs> next meeting would be when we would um, go to go to ABC because we think that the teachers and all will be able to um, figure out what they're looking for and we have some discussions by then. Change contract. It's a brand new contract. It is a contract. <clears throat> and um, the main thing that the board was there were two main things the board was looking to do, as I alluded to earlier, and that is to give a significant raise to our support staff members and to offer benefits to everybody who is a full time staff person. So we accomplished both of those. Um, we can't say if there was a, it's not a percent raise because what we did was we reworked the salary schedule and we did that so that it would become even more equitable. Uh, those of you who were around a few years ago might remember that in 2018, I can't find a spot, in 2018 uh, we re reworked the support staff's wage scale um, based on averages of CCISD schools with those positions in our area. So we, we just did a study of all those wages, averaged them, and that was what Dollar Bay uh, went to because there was quite a bit of disparity between um, support staff members at that time. And what we did this year was um, try to make it even more equitable by sticking with one rate for all support staff members to communicate that everybody is valued, uh, every position is important within our school. Thus, um, the exceptions are our two director positions, our food service director and our custodial director, director of maintenance. And so, uh, whereas previously the wages were anywhere from 12-ish to 15-ish for starting rates. Um, the starting rate for all support staff members now um, who are not directors is 14.50 an hour, and that goes up incrementally for the first five years by 25 cents each year. And this, the head custodian and head of uh, food service is 16.50, two dollars more per an hour, and that goes up incrementally by 50 cents each of those first five years. And then there is a raise built in for the following year of um, an additional 25 cents for all members.
talk to superintendents and elders and in fact we have and um, that's not a, that's not something that the NASD recommends that the school board do it is allowable certainly um, but it is not something that they are recommending or uh, requiring us to do any other questions okay. all in favor aye, aye. opposed Oh, we have to post all of this one complete and then go on to the second. No, we, no, we don't adjourn the meeting yet. We don't. We didn't adjourn the meeting. Okay. We go into. We made a motion to go into closed session. Mark the, mark the time. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stop the time. And then we'll have to make a motion to come out of closed session. Then go. we make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Remember that too well. <laughs> too many years.